हेलो एवरीबडी वेलकम टू दी पाइथन कोर्स इन दी प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डन मॉड्यूल सिक्स दैट इज डिक्शनरीज एंड सेट्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल कवर दी फंक्शनल प्रोग्रामिंग वी विल सी हाउ वी कैन डिफाइन अ फंक्शन हाउ वी कैन कॉल अ फंक्शन वॉट आर द डिफरेंट फंक्शन पैरामीटर्स वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फंक्शन फंक्शन आर्गूमेंट्स global versus local variable and scope of a variable and returning their values right so let's begin i have already opened up my anaconda navigator and i will launch a new notebook okay so now i go to documents my directory github and then i go to python trainings in this tronic and i will create a new python notebook and this is module 6 will name this as module 6 and name of the module is functional program right okay okay so what is a function so function is a block of organized re reusable code that is used to perform a single related action right so in the function what we you do is generally we organize our reusable code that is used to perform perform the related action right and the advantages of using the functions are that is we get a cleaner code and it is used for the re reusability reducing duplication of code and decomposing complex problems into simpler pieces right when we write a function if the same block of code is being repeated again and again so we put that that piece of code into a function and that function could be called anywhere in the program for example we wanted to have a prime number function right so we write the logic of a prime number and we do it but this prime number is being used at around 100 places during throughout our program we cannot write again and again the prime number functionality or let's say we take a different example not only prime number let's say to calculate the salaries of the employees we have some employees working in the company and we wanted to calculate the tax according to the their salaries we wanted to do some code operations that this particular salary of an employee uh, comes into this bracket and we wanted to apply the old tax or the new tax accordingly so that way we need to do that right and this salary calculation is being calculated at uh, five or six places so instead of writing code again and again at five or six places we wanted to write it once and again reuse that code in our programs right and in the later stage if we wanted to change that code we don't need to change at five to six places we change it at only one place and automatically wherever it is called so it is being reflected so that is known as reusability reducing the duplication of code and we have decomposed this complex problem into simpler pieces right instead of uh, again and again modifying that or again and again changing that we need to change it once and automatically it will get reflected we have a cleaner code right and in this piece of code we have also attained the abstraction right so we don't want any external user to look into our code and tamper with the logic right so we are only uh, 
calling that function and that function implementation we are taking in the in in the abstract manner so that nobody gets the logic behind that function right what kind of function it is being written or what is the logic behind that salary calculation right so these are some of the advantages of using functions then what are the types of functions so types of functions we have majorly two types that is one is the built in function and then we could have the user defined functions in the built in functions python has already provided us numerous functions such as print is a inbuilt function that is also a function right so so that's why so python has provided us built in function and we can also define our own function according to our ease according to our business requirement the next is how to define a function for the defining of a function we use a def keyword so def means def means definition right we are defining a function defining a function and corresponding we write a name of a function right and then we put a bracket after bracket we put a colon similarly in the case of if else blocks so this colon works exactly in the same manner so after colon you have written the colon then you need to pre press enter and then it will give you one tab space so this is one tab space right so whatever you write here inside this one tab space it will be treated inside this function right if you write this a uh, number underscore list here to the uh, to the line matching the definition so it will be not treated inside the function it will be treated outside the function right so this thing you need to remember and you need to take care of whatever you write you write under a one tab space after the colon right so function def def is used to define a function right def is followed by a function name right this could be any function name whatever you feel like then it is followed by a parenthesis right and after this we have a colon and inside the colon you write some statements in which you define this function right so let's define some function right so we'll take the simplest one right for example this is my def keyword and i wanted to add two numbers so i'll do my add and after that i put a parenthesis right in which i write a colon and enter so now you see it's one tab space whatever i write so it is being treated as one tab space right so now i define two variables x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20 and i say print x plus y right so this is my function so now i have defined my function right i have only defined my function i have not executed it <coughs> or in the other sense or in the other way we could call it we have not called that function right this piece of code is lying somewhere in the memory until and unless you call it or you say that i need that function it will not get loaded into memory and it not it will not get executed right now it is being resided in your memory some place somewhere it is being there and it has some kind of implementation to be followed and it will give you that implementation right so this is how we define a function then calling a function function could be called by using the name of the function you have defined by using the def keyword and by the calling you says you only need to write the name of the function followed by the parenthesis after you call it it the control will pass to here and it will execute the statements and then control will pass here and then it will show the output right so to call the function we specify the function name with the round brackets so this is how we specify and then we'll get whatever it is written here in the function and it gets executed right so now what i do is i will add call the add function my add function and try to check what it has returned us so it what it does it will it will give me the 30 these two x and y got added and it has given me the result 
in the print format and it will print to the console that is 30 right so whenever this block of memory execute whenever the pointer points to this my add function it will look for this my add function wherever it is declared it will go to that loop or that particular block of memory and will start go inside that particular function and these are the variables it will create those variables and then it will print and then after that when the function uh, nothing is to be executed or nothing is to be uh, fetched from the memory so the control will again then will get passed to this my add right and it will get printed so now the control has gone here if I, if I write again right again it will pass it again it will go here and all the statements will be get executed it will print it and then control will get passed to next statement right your code in your python language goes on sequentially after the first statement it will go to the next and then after that next and so on right and in this case the control will pass to where the function has been declared it will get into that body of that function and will start executing the statements and when the function body has no other statement left to execute it will the control will pass back to the original part right so this is how your controlling of the function or the execution of the function works right so now we have called a function we have defined a function so this is pretty straightforward and it is very easy right okay so okay so now we have the return keyword right suppose in a function we wanted to do some operation and we wanted to return some values from the function right right so in this case what we are trying to do is we are trying to print the values on the console right so this operation we were doing but instead of print I want to execute this both the operation and directly I wanted to store in a variable right so that can be done by instead of writing a return statement so what I can do is I added these two values then I put a return statement right that means return z right first x is 10 y is 20 then x plus y assign it to z then return z in this function so when I try to write this function it has returned me the value of z right so let's see first I need to execute this and then I will execute this right so what it does it will return 30 right so I delete this and now in this part instead of instead of executing it directly I will assign it inside some variable that is I will say output equal to my add now I wanted to print what is in my the output right or print Now you can see that here I have called a function my add the control goes to this body it will execute these statements it will do this operation addition operation of adding two numbers and it will return z this function when the control will come and it will in the output we are catching this operation of add whatever it has done in the output right now we are printing the output and then the output variable has got the value that is 30 so this is how you could return via function right okay so return keyword is used to return values from a function a function implicitly returns none by default even if you don't use the return keyword right so if you don't put any return keyword it will return none right in this case for example I don't return anything now you'll see 
what is the output I need to execute this first and then I will execute this so now as we are returning no nothing so it has returned us none right so instead of Z I could return anything I could return Amit also right now the output will be Amit right so it is not like that whatever you are calculating that has to be returned you can return your own values also right but it is generally followed if you are writing a function then you are computing something and then you are trying to return it and then storing in a variable or a list or like that right so this is how your return function will work or return or return keyword will work in case of your function right okay. then the next is parameterized functions what are parameterized functions let's try to understand this right in this case I have taken the values x and y by default 10 and 20 what if I wanted to change these values or make it a as a parameterized so instead of writing x and y here I could write x comma y here right or I could write x1 and y1 here and here I could say whatever value x1 is giving us that you need to assign it to x and whatever value y is there I will assign it to y and then I will make z equal to x plus y and will return z right so this I could do it right so inside this my add I need to pass x1 and y1 I need I can say I pass 2 comma 3 so here x1 will be having the value as 2 and y1 will be having the value as 2 as 4 as we have passed this arguments to this function right and then inside this function you get to replace x1 by x and y1 by y and then you are computing x plus y and then returning this value so let us try to execute this now you see 2 plus 4 is 6 if I change the value to 40 or 2 to 20 now it is 60 right so here you have parameterized your variables which are being used in your functions right so names in the function definition are called parameters so these are the parameters and values you supply are called arguments so here I have supplied the arguments as 20 and 40 and these are the parameters so this we have parameterized now we are supplying the arguments to my function my add and then these parameters have been uh, assigned as 20 and 40 respectively right so this is you how you can parameterize your functions okay so next is default arguments so what is default arguments so let us try to understand it for example in this part I need to make x value of x always to 100 right right so if I don't specify anything x will be always be 100 so x1 will be always be 100 and then in the function inside the function x1 will be get replaced to x then x will be always be having the value of 100 and why you can change anything right you can make it 40 60 anything but x would always be 100 right so in this function if I don't specify anything so the result would be 100 plus 40 equal to 140 so let us try to see this okay so in this part it says non-default arguments follows a default argument right 
so I need to write this first right ok now it is correct so here in this case what it says x1 is always as 100 and y1 you could have anything any value right now I am assigning y to 40 and x1 remains 100 so result would be 140 got it so here we wanted to fix the value of x that is we are saying that always try to make it a default value when we don't specify any value of x we only specified value of y but what if if in your business logic we wanted to change that value we wanted to override it so that you can do it by changing it or by supplying in the argument so here in the arguments in place of x1 so I have specified 120 now this x1 would be replaced by 120 not 100 so now the result would be 160 so let us try to see it now the result is 160 right so for the default arguments you could have your default arguments by specifying the uh, assignment operator right and then assign that value but if you wanted to override that value you need to specify that value into the your parameters if you don't specify it then by default the value is 100 only but if you specify the value will be override and the result would be 40 plus 130 is 170 right so this is how your default arguments will be there you can also specify the default argument for y1 also so let's say i have specified the default argument for y equal to 50 and here i don't specify anything now by default right your function will return 150 and if i specify the values as 60 comma 120 the function will return addition of this 60 plus 120 is 180 right so similarly you can specify the default arguments and if default arguments if you wanted to override the default arguments and then you need to specify the values in the in your arguments right okay right so this is pretty straightforward so upper limit is equal to 4 so we have specified the default arguments if you don't specify right then this value is your default and if you specify then the values get over right and 5 will come in the upper value 5 will come right so this is how your default arguments will work okay now this thing is you need to remember always a non-default argument may not follow default arguments while defining a function as you can see I was trying to write x1 comma y right so it gives us the gave me the error so uh, that's why I need to change it right so you cannot have a default argument a non-default argument cannot come after default argument so this is default argument and this is non default argument so it cannot come it will return your error so this is non default argument follows after default argument so you need to write your y in the beginning right so this thing you need to remember right so we cannot have your step after your default argument step could be written as in the front okay so we have the keyword arguments right this is pretty much straightforward okay so we can also name it right for example here in this case we were having the values right we could say y1 equal to 100 and 
x1 equal to 120 let's say so this we could write it right so this value is being replaced by y1 and this value is being replaced by x1 right this gets override and this gets the y1 so this also you could do it and you could have your keyword arguments right similarly in this case also we cannot uh, yeah okay so using this function is easier since you don't have to worry or remember about the order of the arguments right suppose if i write x1 first and y1 second right so we don't need to remember the uh, order so that could be done otherwise if this function consists of lots many parameters right and we need to remember uh, we do need to remember their order so that is very difficult so instead of that we need to put a uh, that x1 equal to 100 y1 so equal to operator by signing these values to the parameters we could do this operation so that is very easy right so that you get do not get confused that how many parameters were there what value will get into what parameter so that is very much difficult to judge and analyze right okay so you can give values only to those parameters which you want provided that the other parameters will have default argument value right for example here in this case you can give y1 equal to 20 only already x1 is having some value so it will be computed right so here you are specifying the value of y1 equal to 20 and x1 is already be 100 so you don't need to specify the value of x1 or you, you don't need to write x1 also because it's having the default value right so this is how it works and also a non keyword arguments cannot follow the keyword arguments while calling this function this holds true when you are calling that function also this holds when you are de defining the function also and when you are calling the function also so this works exactly the same right so this is how it works right so you cannot have your x here so positional arguments follows keyword argument so you have to write x equal to some value you need to assign some value x1 sorry right got it okay so the next concept is your global keyword global variable right now we'll also talk about the scope right for example variables defined outside a function or a class is called as a global variable right so now this is your counter 10 and this is your function right inside your function we are printing the value of the counter right okay so now i'm trying to get the print where and the output is 10 right and the counter is also 10 right so counter is your global variable right now what i am trying to do is here it is your counter equal to 10 then we have defined a function and inside your function i have put the value of counter equal to 20 then i am printing that value and then function body is function definition is over then we are calling that function right and we are trying to print the value of the counter what will happen it will go here it will have a counter variable assigned a value 10 right then you have your print where it will get executed you have a counter variable again it has got value 20 right then it will print the value of counter right then the execution will pass here only back to the calling then it will print 20 right 
and then after that it will print counter that is 10 right so this thing will understand why it is happening but as you can see that this value should be replaced by 20 and in the second print statement when I try to call the counter it sh must be 20 instead of 10 so why it is happening let's find out right so first of all I'll understand I'll make you understand what is the problem and then we'll try to figure it out how it is being solved right suppose we have a counter equal to 10 right and then we have defined a function I say my func and inside that function I change the value of the counter to 20 right and I'm returning counter right here I am printing the value of counter first I am not calling any function just I am printing the value of counter what is it so value of counter is 10 right now I am calling that function my fun right now let's see what will happen first 10 got printed and in the my function function 20 got printed right now the value of counter has become 20 if I again try to print counter it will give me 20 let's see no but it has given us 10 so let us find out why it has given us 10 as per the logic this counter variable should we have changed to 20 so as per this uh, statements which have been written so it must be assigned 20 value and I when I run this function it will give me back 20 right instead of giving me 10 so let us try to find out what went wrong here so let us analyze this in python tutor in the visualization you will get to understand it better so I will copy this code meanwhile and will see here ok so let us visualize what is happening here so now when the first statement get executed so counter equal to 10 now we have a global frame in which we have a counter variable and the variable value is been assigned as 10 so it get a particular memory assigned to it in the in the hardware and assigned a value of 10 then we are defining the function right and here I am now my function gets a particular memory block so this function resides in some memory block right then I am printing the value of counter so it goes into the print counter now output is 10 right then I am trying to call that my function now my function body gets called up and it will go inside the my function body now here there is another variable that is counter 20 so this counter right no this counter is of global frame and this counter is of my function you need to see the difference so this variable is in the scope of the function but this variable was in the global frame at the global scope right because it was outside that function now we have created another function with the name counter right so that's why it is being being contradicting with your global frame but don't get get confused this counter and this counter is totally different so this resides inside your function and this resides outside your function in the global frame so now in my function another variable counter is being created which is being assigned as a value of 20 and now in this part we are returning the value of counter right and the return value is 20 right now the control will pass to this eighth line right and you can see that the function scope gets deleted 
right so you you can no longer access that counter variable which was present inside your my function that gets deleted right so this means your scope of the variables is only active when the function is active when it is being residing inside your function as soon as your function control pass to the calling statement it will get out of their memory block right it will delete all the variables which it was currently holding or currently working on right so this thing you need to understand right so now now this my print function right so uh, again if i try to access here uh, if i wanted to access your counter now the counter value will be 10 but here in the function it was 20 right so this is how your program execution has come and now we have understood the global and the variable scope right right okay so this is your so this we we have encountered or we have learned like the scope of the variable inside your function is your local right so as soon as your function uh, calling is there right then and only then your parameters are being active or your variables are being active right as soon as your function control gets out of the uh, body or gets out of that control so there is no longer any variable or uh, value holding that particular variable right but what if i wanted to do the modifications in the global variable right what if i wanted to do this that i have a counter 10 which is outside defined my function and inside that function i can change its value and then return something to this i want this counter globally to change something to new value that could be done if you define your global this says global keyword says this is your fung this is your parameter or this is your variable which is your globally defined so it is in the global scope not in the local scope of this function so this global variable has to be defined outside and now you are changing the value of counter and when you change the value so it will come as 20 because you have changed that value right so let us try to understand this here instead of doing this i just introduce a global and i will understand uh, uh, do counter now let us see now this function counter value was 10 now i have run that function i have changed that value to 20 now if i again run this statement the value will be changed to 20 not 10 because we have made it global now it has been changed to 20 so let us try to understand this visualize this now inside this i will print the value of counter and we'll see it okay so now we have a global that is counter equal to 10 i define a function function gets a particular uh, address then i'm trying to print the value of the counter so that is 10 then i have a my function that gets executed right it goes inside that function right now we have the counter we are on the counter so now see it has not made any variable inside that function so now the global frame the counter which resides on the global frame gets value as 20 and now we are trying to return that value right so value got returned okay first it was 20 now the function got executed now i'm again trying to print the value of counter that would be 20 because i have changed it made it a global right so this we need to understand and make sure so this is your local or global scope what we define it right 
okay then we have calling functions as arguments right we not only we can have your variables inside your arguments but you can also call another function function inside your argument so this kind of question could be asked in your interviews so they might say we have already seen as a variables inside define your function and we can call that variables and can do lot many things with your arguments is function accepting another function as a argument yes so in this case there are two function function 1 and function 2 right and inside your function 2 there is another function right right so what we are trying to do is we are trying to run function 2 and inside that your function we are trying to run function 1 right so that it controls its passes over here and then it is trying to run that function right so we can have functions inside your arguments right okay okay so now we have a program for fibonacci series so fibonacci series is something in which each number is the sum of two preceding numbers the simplest fibonacci series is 1 then 1 then 1 plus 1 is 2 2 plus 1 is 3 3 plus 2 is 5 and 5 plus 3 is 8 and so on so this is how fibonacci series is being defined so this is your for exercise you need to write a program which can implement a fibonacci series so you need to write a function that is fibonacci series function in which you pass the uh, number that how many length is being is there so this length could be 10 15 and so on right and you could start with your first number as 1 and second number is also 1 and then you could do the uh, logic you can write the logic that 1 plus 1 and then you can make it 2 then the previous is next and next is previous next is uh, uh, that the next is the output so this logic you need to find out uh, find out and then write that logic and then in the next lecture we will solve this problem right so thank you guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video thank you